Well, 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 well. Week number one of the NFL season came and went. Now we are waiting. We are 24 hours away from week two. We are 24 hours away from week number two. And we had some pretty interesting games going on, so let's break them all down real quick. Yeah, that opening night was something, wasn't it? You know, you had the new kickoff rule, you know, being in place, landing zone and everything like that. And I get it. It actually worked. It actually worked. The landing zone actually worked out in a couple cases. But we'll talk about those cases like, you know, the Cardinals getting a punt return touchdown. The Cowboys getting a, a big touchdown with Kabate Turpin, you know. But it's a new rule. Still have to adjust to it. It's still weird to me. So we have a landing zone, you know. We have we're adopting the XFL kickoffs instead of the U instead of the USFL ones, but it's fine. It's whatever. Can't 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 say anything, you know. More, uh, um, it it works. What can I say? It works. We have what two kicks taken back for TDs, you know. Yeah, there was like a weird, um, you know, there was a weird amount of percentage of kicks that went basically back in the end zone for touchbacks still, but, you know, at the end of the day, it happened. It happened. We we changed the kickoff rule, and it's kind of working out. But, yeah, Chiefs-Ravens was – it was a game that happened, marred by penalties, though. Lots and lots of illegal formation penalties due to the Ravens just not lining up correctly, and the Chiefs weren't doing that either at times. Uh, and it was like four or five straight penalties at the start of this game where it was just illegal formation after illegal formation penalty. And at the end of the day, Isaiah likely could not get his toe down in bounds to tie the game and force overtime at, at minimum against these Chiefs. And I know people are going to say, oh, well, the Chiefs, you know, they have the refs on their side. N- no. Remember. The the old the age old rule that I've said on this channel for God knows how many years, ref ball does not discriminate, and yeah, ref ball will definitely screw the Chiefs when it when it happens. But tonight, but that night it was not about you know, it was not about that. It was about Isaiah Likely's toe not staying in bounds. It was not in the green. It was in the white. The Eagles and the Packers played in a soccer field in Brazil on Friday night. And yet the Eagles still looked terrible for most of that game. Again, we're talking Jordan Love until he got hurt in the last few seconds of that game. Was torching that Eagles defense. But the Eagles countered, albeit very slowly, with Devontae Smith. AJ Brown and of course Saquon Saquad Barkley with three touchdowns in this game. Again, Jalen Hurts, you know, definitely had some rough moments in this one, but at the end of the day, the Eagles got the victory late, and Jordan Love is now out with Malik Willis, who has to step up now to the plate and take over for at least three to six weeks. You know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be weird. Forty. No, no, not the 49ers. We'll talk about the Panthers, right? Let's talk about the 49ers last. Panthers look terrible against the Saints. No comment. The Giants wearing these Montreal esque uniforms also look terrible against the Vikings. How do you let Sam Darnold fool you into thinking that he's that good? It's crazy. The Bengals couldn't keep their hands on the ball against the Patriots at all. You know, you let Jacoby Brissett beat you in a football game. You let this Patriots defense, while well, not as good as it used to be, it, can, it has some brief moments, but, again, the Patriots have had down years after down years after Brady left in that first year of the Mac Jones campaign. But it's weird. It's weird to see the Bengals just look so inept on offense. The Steelers and the Falcons was, no, sir. Why did I watch the entirety of this game? That was rough. Six Steelers field goals by Boswell was the difference. You know Justin Fields didn't do anything. You know 
you know, damn well, Kirk Cousins didn't do anything. I mean, B. John Robinson is basically the only guy doing anything for the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, the weird thing is, is that, you know, a lot of people are trying to blame it on the pistol offense because, again, a lot of that, a lot of that game, the Falcons were in the pistol and they were running the ball. Now, what I want to preface is, is what I want to say is, is that the pistol can be innovated. The pistols basically, you know, the pistols basically replaced the single back formation in some ways, and even in some cases the I formation in some ways as well. You know, not just with the Ravens, but you know, college teams like Nevada and others. And it can be a great equalizer if you don't want to go on the center, you don't want to go full shotgun, you, you want to still have that hybrid type that feel. And some teams have basically adopted that form, you know, like the Falcons this past week. But the problem with that is the problem with this line of thinking of thinking the pistol offense is bad and it doesn't, you know, and oh, well, the run gaps, you know, you got to have, you know, this and this to work. I, I know, I know, but at the same time, you have to be dynamic with your play calling. You cannot run 81% of the time in the pistol. You have to be, you have to be a bit more, you have to be a bit more, you know, complex than that. Call some wheel routes, call some fades, call something. You know, an offense, if an offense can, you know, cater to Ben freaking Roethlisberger, with, and he was hurt. You know, there was a time when he was hurt. Yeah, yeah, y'all think I don't remember when Ben Roethlisberger was hurt and they switched to the pistol, and the Pittsburgh Steelers switched to the pistol back in like 2012 or something like that. And that offense and that Pittsburgh offense was able to do some damage. I don't know why this didn't apply here. Maybe it's because of TJ Watt, you know, just wrecking havoc. Maybe because of that. Houston and Tennessee, they went. To, they went to war. We're talking Anthony Richardson was throwing out bombs to Alec Pierce and everybody else. I mean, it was just it was just immaculate. The Texans were able to get the win in the end, though. The Bills were able to come back after the Cardinals blew a 20-plus point lead, basically. And Josh Allen did it all by himself, basically. He did it all by himself, and he beat the Cardinals. The Bears got simply got lucky. Will Levis is terrible. You know, Caleb Williams did not look that great. You know, you have that amazing cast of receivers and stuff like that, and you still couldn't do too much damage on offense. You couldn't even – the Bears couldn't even score an offensive touchdown. That's how bad it was. And yet the Titans still blew it. They still blew the game. The Dolphins and the Jags were in a dogfight for most of this game, but the real kicker was the Tyreek Hill story, you know, aside from the game-winning kick that the Dolphins had. But the real kicker, again – was the Tyreek Hill story. And he, and he even ended up burning some Jags on his way to the end zone for a touchdown, of course, today. But he couldn't outrun the police, though. And there was an altercation on camera. And it, it's it's a bit rough. I haven't watched the whole body camp footage yet. But um, it's getting spicy. It's, I'll say that. But I'll say Tyreek Hill won, probably zero, because he was able to play on Sunday. And he was able to cash a lot of people out on like prize picks or underdog or whatever fantasy sports gambling app that you use. So, uh, yeah. How about those Seahawks, right? In a game where two safeties happened, because that that's a real thing, and Bo Nix was the starting quarterback, the Seahawks were able to get a victory. I, 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 I genuinely do not know what's wrong with Denver. Again, a lot of people rated Bo Nix as the worst quarterback or starting quarterback this year, and it's kind of showed because he was at like 68 yards, like halfway into the third quarter. It was, it was that bad. It was that bad. And a lot of quarterbacks were like were really not great at throwing the ball today, at throwing the ball on Sunday. Like I think a lot of quarterbacks didn't even eclipse 200 yards. Uh, the Chargers and the Raiders, you know, too, was an interesting game for a little bit, but the Chargers were able to overwhelm the Raiders with Khalil Mack and the rest of that defense, you know. Although, although Max Crosby and the Raiders were able to stifle Justin Herbert for more time than it needed than he needed to be stifled, he was on he was on the ground eating grass for more time than he needed to be. 
Mr. Herbert was. And I mean, the Chargers offense it looks okay, but I mean, it's going to have to pick up its step a little bit more. I think the wide receiving core, you're probably going to have to lean on Lab McConkey to, you know, like Quentin Johnson's not that guy, never has been. And I, I mean, if J.K. Dobbins, you know, can do what he did again, and I mean, shoot, might as well keep the ball running behind him. Keep that, keep that Michigan offense, you know, from like the before J.J. McCarthy. Keep that, keep that Michigan offense that would have three tight ends in the backfield and everything like that. Keep that offense. Run the ball up the gut. Run the ball up the gut with that offensive line if that's the case. The Cowboys didn't really do too much. They relied on their defense. To be quite honest with you, against the Browns and the Sean Watson, who has yet another case against them. Be serious. I know, I know, be serious, but come on. This is ridiculous. Get this man out of here. He is robbing Cleveland just like Kirk Cousins is robbing Atlanta. Get this man out of here. He looked terrible in this game against the Cowboys. And the and I mean, again, the Cowboys really didn't have to do much on offense because, you know. Again, the turpid punt return, the the defense playing the way it did with Parsons and Diggs and you know everybody else stepping up because there were a lot of injuries to this defense. It was great. It was great to watch. I still think I still just don't think we're going anywhere this year, but this is a good start to prove me wrong because I have been proven wrong plenty of times before and I probably will again. Tampa, yeah, they beat yeah, they beat the commanders. Yeah, Jaden Daniels got like two rushing touchdowns, but that's about it. You know, getting torched by Mike Evans and Chris Gotton, you know, is just like, yeah, it, it, it's GG's, it's over for you. The Lions and the Rams had a pretty good game. Rams had a lot of injuries though, and they were definitely feeling, you know, at times that Aaron Donald was simply not there anymore. He was simply not there. And the Lions were able to take advantage of that in overtime, despite the fact that, you know, Cooper Cup was running all over that Lions defense because of Puka Nakua getting hurt. Um, but David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs were able to get the job done, especially Montgomery with some powerful runs behind that offensive line in overtime. And although the Rams had a valiant comeback effort with Stafford passing for over 350 yards, the Lions win an OT, one of the best games of the weekend. Definitely going to be something. It might be the NFC Championship, to be quite honest with you. I think these two teams are two of the best. And the 49ers, no CMC, so they had to rely on a different guy. They had to rely on a different guy in the backfield, and he delivered with the, the quickness. Jordan Mason delivered in this game with over 147 well with 147 yards rushing and a couple to, and a touchdown Aaron Rodgers eh, he looked he looked he didn't look too good he didn't look too good in that game he didn't look too good at all in this game so the more we have Bills Dolphins we're gonna see the cheetah try and outrace the Buffalo Bills on Thursday night and then Sunday we have some pretty good ones again or, or we're gonna see the Sam Darnold that you know played really good against the Giants. He was he started like 13 to 13 or something like that. He started really hot and he had to cool off a little bit, but that's just because that's just the nature of the game. And the 49ers led by Fred Warner on defense, you know, they're they're still hungry. They they're still hungry for a you know for a Super Bowl, they want that Super Bowl ring back, and they started off very nice against the Jets, and they could win again. Seahawks Patriots should be an interesting one if you want to watch that one. Giants Commanders, I wouldn't say watch that again. A lot of people are saying these are the two bottom teams in the NFC, two of the two of the bottom teams anyway, and I believe so. Again, Chargers Panthers don't watch that either. That's it's the Panthers, man. Like Bryce Young terrible in that game again. Like Saints Cowboys, most of the country is probably going to be watching this game early because of Tom Brady. And I know, I know Tom Brady was rough in the booth, but it's all right. You know, the Cowboys get their first three games with Tom Brady. Isn't that great, guys? Isn't that great? 
this is not, not, not you know, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about it. I'm not, I'm not happy about it at all. Colts Packers again should be interesting. AR5, will he throw some more deep bombs against this Packers defense? Because when the when the things were there, when the things were thinking for the Eagles, when things were moving swiftly for the Eagles, boy, they burned the Packers deep. And AR5, the way he was throwing that thing, real good. Again, the Browns, Deshaun Watson is like the biggest storyline of this game, to be quite honest with you. And the Jags, you know, trying to rebound. You know, Jets, Titans, um, another game where two teams are trying to rebound after a loss. You know, can this wide receiving core for the Jets, you know, kind of get it together? Because I just don't, again, I just don't buy it. Like, I want this team to make the playoffs, and I thought they could, but then Sauce Garner got hurt, and everything else, you know, just kind of went eh. Um, but also Bucks Lions should be interesting in the early window. You know, Baker Mayfield going up against Jared Goff. That's a good one. That's honestly a good matchup. You know, I think these are two playoff teams at the end of the day. Raiders, Ravens. Um, Ravens, you know, again, trying to really mu- trying to really muscle themselves in the AFC. They really have to make some muscle out of nothing, you know, without Without trying to get too bad into it, like Ravens have to win this game. Raiders have to win this game. It's early. You want to win your games early, and you really want to. We really want to win them early. Like you want to win every week in the NFL, but you really want to win these games early. Rams, Cardinals. The Cardinals blow another lead. I'm going to blow a gasket. Bengals, Chiefs, and Steelers, Broncos are in the late window they are they are the other two games in the late window aside from the cardinals rams which will only go to part of the country and then Bengals chiefs will go to most of the country again it's going to be bo nicks versus justin fields in the steelers broncos game and i salute you if you want to watch that i am going to be watching the pl championship along with the wba game in the late window and and along with Bengals chiefs because i mean it's burrow versus mahomes what more can you ask for? If the Bengals, you know, you know, can if the Bengals can get some offense going and get things, you know, not have butterfingers, and I think things will be okay. Bears, Texas, on the other hand, I just don't, I just don't see it. Again, the Bears, you know, again, there's still time to prove me wrong, of course. But the Bears had, you know, not the greatest offense this past week. They're going to be against the Texans, a really, really interesting team, a really, really interesting team that could win the AFC South. You know, and it won't be easy for them. I said it last week in my week one slash preseason predictions video that, hey, it ain't going to be easy for the Texans to win the AFC South this year. And then Falcons-Eagles to round it out. I swear, if y'all if y'all make fun of one of my favorite offenses one more time, I, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna blow a gasket because like that's ridiculous. You can't cater like you can't cater to an offense like this. If the Eagles have their way, like they like they did against the um, Packers. The Eagles have their way like they did against the Packers and just kind of go up and down the field against the Falcons because there were some times, you know, when Justin Fields was able to make some big completions, but for the most part, he did not. And the Falcons, you know, are very much vulnerable, you know, in the secondary. They're very much vulnerable to, you know, big plays, but nobody's, but again, there's only been one week of the game, so there hasn't really been too much to explore. The Falcons really, I think the Falcons' problem is, is they gotta get their offense together. And the Eagles, same thing. They gotta get their offense together. They looked anemic, they looked sluggish at times, and they gotta fix that. So yeah, week two is in a nutshell, and it should be one hell of a week. Cannot wait. We're gonna start on Thursday night, get those Sunday games out the way. And we have just one Monday night game this week. So we'll start the double, we'll start the double headers next week. So, you know. I hope you all enjoy week number two of the NFL season. What was your what was your thoughts on week one? Just tell me down in the comments and stuff like that below. We'll have some polls up for some of these bigger games real soon for this week. 
like we already have one for Bills Dolphins, and we'll put some more up there in a few. But yeah, good night, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed, and be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and click the notification bell. And remember, build the brand. It's here to stay.